Question 1. A 22-year-old patient is admitted to the psychiatric unit with a diagnosis of schizophrenia. The patient appears to be responding to internal stimuli and reports auditory hallucinations telling him to harm himself. Question. As a nurse, what is your initial intervention for this patient? A. Encourage the patient to describe the hallucinations in detail. B. Administer PRN antipsychotic medication as ordered. C. Place the patient on one-to-one -one observation. D. Engage the patient in a group therapy session. Correct answer. C. Place the patient on one-to-one -one observation. Rationale. The priority for this patient is safety due to the risk of self-harm. One-to-one -one observation ensures constant supervision, which is crucial for a patient experiencing command hallucinations that may lead to self-injury. While administering medication, B, and encouraging discussion about hallucinations, A, are important, these do not address the immediate risk of harm. Group therapy, D, is inappropriate at this stage due to the patient's acute symptoms and risk of harm to self. Question 2. Scenario, a 35-year-old patient with bipolar disorder is experiencing a manic episode. The patient is highly agitated, speaking rapidly, and exhibiting grandiose thinking. Question, which of the following nursing interventions is most appropriate for this patient? A. Challenge the patient's grandiose thinking to bring them back to reality. B. Provide a quiet environment and encourage rest. C. Engage the patient in high-energy activities to match their energy level. D. Encourage the patient to make important life decisions while their mood is elevated. Correct answer. B. Provide a quiet environment and encourage rest. Rationale. During a manic episode, it is important to provide a calm, quiet environment to avoid further stimulation. Encouraging rest helps to decrease agitation and protect the patient from physical exhaustion. Challenging grandiose thinking, A, can lead to increased agitation. High energy activities, C, may exacerbate mania, and encouraging decision making, D, during a manic episode, can lead to poor judgment and regrettable choices. Question 3. Scenario, a nurse is caring for a patient diagnosed with major depressive disorder. The patient has recently started a new antidepressant medication. Question, what is an important nursing consideration when monitoring this patient? A. The full effect of antidepressants is usually seen within the first 48 hours. B. Increased energy from the medication can lead to a higher risk of suicide in the early stages of treatment. C. Antidepressants typically cause a significant increase in appetite. D. Patients on antidepressants should avoid social interactions as they can be overwhelming. Correct answer. B. Increased energy from the medication can lead to a higher risk of suicide in the early stages of treatment. Rationale. When starting antidepressants, patients may experience an increase in energy before an improvement in mood occurs. This can increase the risk of suicide as the patient may now have the energy to act on suicidal thoughts. It is essential to closely monitor patients for worsening depression or suicidal thinking, especially in the first few weeks of treatment. The full effect of antidepressants is typically seen after several weeks, not 48 hours, a. Eh? Changes in appetite can occur, but a significant increase is not typical, c. Encouraging social interaction can be part of a holistic approach to care, d. Question 4. Scenario, a nurse is caring for a patient with generalized anxiety disorder, GAD. The patient reports constant worry about various aspects of life, causing significant distress and impairment in daily functioning. Question. Which of the following interventions is most appropriate for a patient with GAD? A. Advise the patient to avoid stressful situations. B. Teach relaxation techniques and deep breathing exercises. C. Recommend increasing caffeine intake to stay alert. D. Suggest the use of alcohol to relax in the evenings. Correct answer. B. Teach relaxation techniques and deep breathing exercises. Rationale. 
relaxation techniques and deep breathing exercises are effective interventions for managing anxiety. They help in reducing the physiological symptoms of anxiety and can be used by patients to gain control over their symptoms. Avoiding stressful situations, A, is not practical or therapeutic, as it's impossible to avoid all stress. Increasing caffeine intake, C, can worsen anxiety symptoms. The use of alcohol, D, as a coping mechanism is inappropriate and can lead to dependency. Question 5. Scenario. A nurse is caring for a patient who has been diagnosed with obsessive-compulsive disorder, OCD. The patient spends hours each day washing their hands due to a fear of contamination. Question. What is the most appropriate nursing intervention for this patient? A. Encourage the patient to stop washing their hands immediately. B. Gradually increase the time between hand washings. C. Ignore the behavior as focusing on it might increase anxiety. D. Provide education on the importance of personal hygiene. Correct answer. B. Gradually increase the time between hand washings. Rationale. For a patient with OCD, gradual exposure and response prevention, ERP, is a recommended approach. This involves gradually increasing the time between the compulsive behaviors, hand washing in this case, thereby reducing the anxiety associated with not performing the ritual. Abruptly stopping the behavior, A, can cause significant anxiety and is not therapeutically effective. Ignoring the behavior, C, does not help in managing or treating OCD. While education on personal hygiene, D, is important, it does not address the underlying OCD behavior. Question 6. Scenario. A 40-year-old patient with a history of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, reports experiencing flashbacks and nightmares related to a traumatic event. Question. What should be the focus of nursing care for this patient? A. Encourage the patient to avoid talking about the traumatic event to prevent re-traumatization. B. Promote a safe and therapeutic environment to discuss feelings and experiences. C. Advise the patient to focus on positive thoughts and ignore the flashbacks. D. Schedule activities to keep the patient busy and distract them from their thoughts. Correct answer. B. Promote a safe and therapeutic environment to discuss feelings and experiences. Rationale. For patients with PTSD, creating a safe and therapeutic environment where they can discuss their feelings and traumatic experiences without judgment is crucial. This helps in processing the trauma and managing symptoms, like flashbacks and nightmares. Avoiding discussion of the trauma, A, can delay healing and does not allow for therapeutic processing. Encouraging the patient to focus only on positive thoughts, C, and distracting them, D, does not address the underlying trauma and can invalidate their experience. Question 7. Scenario. A nurse is working with a patient who has been recently diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. The patient exhibits intense fear of abandonment and unstable personal relationships. Question, which nursing intervention is most effective for managing patients with borderline personality disorder? A. Establishing strict boundaries and consistent limits. B. Encouraging the patient to avoid intense relationships. C. Recommending complete social isolation until stability is achieved. D. Focusing solely on problem-solving techniques. Correct answer. A. Establishing strict boundaries and consistent limits. Rationale. Patients with borderline personality disorder benefit from a structured environment where clear boundaries and consistent limits are established. This helps in creating a sense of safety and predictability. Encouraging avoidance of relationships, B, or recommending social isolation, C, are not therapeutic and can exacerbate feelings of abandonment. While problem-solving is an important skill, focusing solely on this, D, neglects the emotional and relational aspects of care. Question 8. Scenario. A nurse is planning care for a patient diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. The patient expresses an intense fear of gaining weight and has a distorted body image. Question, what is an essential component of care for this patient? A. Implementing a high-calorie diet immediately to gain weight. B. Establishing a controlled and monitored eating plan. 
c. Encouraging the patient to exercise to improve their mood. d. Avoiding discussions about weight and body image. Correct answer, b. Establishing a controlled and monitored eating plan. Rationale, for patients with anorexia nervosa, it's important to establish a controlled and monitored eating plan to address nutritional deficiencies and promote healthy weight gain. This plan should be developed collaboratively with the patient, considering their fears and anxieties about food and weight. Implementing a high-calorie diet immediately, a, can be overwhelming and counterproductive. Encouraging exercise, c, in a patient who is medically unstable or has a low BMI, can be dangerous. Avoiding discussions about weight and body image, d, is not therapeutic as these are central issues in anorexia nervosa. Question 9. Scenario, a patient with a history of alcohol use disorder is admitted to the hospital. The nurse notes that the patient is tremulous, anxious, and sweating profusely. Question, what is the nurse's priority intervention? A. Encourage the patient to participate in group therapy sessions. B. Administer prescribed medication for alcohol withdrawal. C. Advise the patient to drink fluids containing caffeine. D. Recommend complete bed rest for the duration of the symptoms. Correct answer. B. Administer prescribed medication for alcohol withdrawal. Rationale. The patient's symptoms suggest alcohol withdrawal, which can have serious and potentially life-threatening consequences. The priority intervention is to administer prescribed medication to manage withdrawal symptoms and prevent complications like seizures. Group therapy, A, is not the immediate priority during acute withdrawal. Caffeine, C, can exacerbate symptoms of withdrawal and should be avoided. While rest is important, complete bed rest, D, is not necessary unless medically indicated. Question 10. Scenario, a nurse is caring for a patient who has been diagnosed with panic disorder. The patient reports experiencing sudden episodes of intense fear, palpitations, and a sense of impending doom. Question, which of the following nursing actions is most appropriate during a panic attack? A. Engage the patient in complex problem-solving tasks. B. Encourage deep, slow breathing and provide a quiet environment. C. Recommend increasing physical activity immediately. D. Administer a stimulant to keep the patient alert. Correct answer. B. Encourage deep, slow breathing and provide a quiet environment. Rationale. During a panic attack, it's important to help the patient manage acute symptoms. Encouraging deep, slow breathing can help control hyperventilation and reduce the intensity of the panic attack. Providing a quiet, non-stimulating environment can also help decrease anxiety. Engaging in complex tasks, A, or increasing physical activity, C, during a panic attack can exacerbate symptoms. Administering a stimulant, D, is contraindicated as it can worsen anxiety. Question 11. Scenario, a nurse is conducting a mental health assessment on a patient who exhibits symptoms of depression. The patient reports a loss of interest in activities they previously enjoyed and feelings of hopelessness. Question, what should the nurse prioritize when developing a care plan for this patient? A. Immediate participation in high-energy group activities. B. Assessment of the patient's risk for self-harm or suicide. C. Advising the patient to avoid social interactions until mood improves. D. Encouraging the patient to make major life decisions to improve their mood. Correct answer. B. Assessment of the patient's risk for self-harm or suicide. Rationale. In patients with depression, especially those reporting hopelessness, it's critical to assess the risk of self-harm or suicide. This assessment guides the development of a safe and effective care plan. High-energy activities, A, may be overwhelming for a depressed patient. Avoiding social interactions, C, is not therapeutic and can lead to further isolation. Encouraging major life decisions, D, during a depressive episode is inappropriate due to impaired judgment. Question 12. Scenario, a patient diagnosed with schizophrenia reports auditory hallucinations instructing them to harm others. The patient appears agitated and is pacing the room. 
Question, what is the nurse's immediate priority for this patient? A. Encourage the patient to describe the hallucinations in detail. B. Initiate a conversation about recent stressors in the patient's life. C. Ensure the safety of the patient and others by providing a secure environment. D. Distract the patient with recreational activities. Correct answer. C. Ensure the safety of the patient and others by providing a secure environment. Rationale. The immediate priority is to ensure the safety of the patient and others, given the nature of the hallucinations and the patient's agitation. This may involve close observation and possibly the use of a secure environment to prevent harm. While understanding the hallucinations, A, and exploring stressors, B, are important in comprehensive care, these are not the first priorities in a potentially dangerous situation. Distracting the patient, D, is not a sufficient response to the immediate safety risk. Question 13. Scenario, a nurse is working with a patient diagnosed with agoraphobia. The patient experiences severe anxiety about being in places where escape might be difficult. Question, what therapeutic approach should the nurse prioritize when caring for this patient? A. Immediate exposure to feared situations in a controlled environment. B. Gradual exposure therapy combined with cognitive behavioral strategies. C. Avoidance of all situations that may trigger anxiety. D. Use of sedative medication whenever the patient must face a feared situation. Correct answer. B. Gradual exposure therapy combined with cognitive behavioral strategies. Rationale. Gradual exposure therapy, along with cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, is effective for treating agoraphobia. This approach helps the patient confront and manage their fears in a controlled and progressive manner, reducing anxiety over time. Immediate exposure, A, can be overwhelming and potentially detrimental. Complete avoidance, C, reinforces the phobia and is not therapeutic. Relying on sedative medication, D, as the primary intervention does not address the underlying phobia and may lead to dependence. Question 14. Scenario, a patient with bipolar disorder is currently in a hypomanic phase. The nurse observes that the patient is becoming increasingly irritable and is sleeping less. Question, what is the most appropriate nursing intervention in this situation? A. Encourage the patient to engage in high-intensity exercise. B. Monitor for escalating mania and communicate changes to the healthcare team. C. Suggest that the patient make important financial decisions at this time. D. Advise the patient to increase caffeine intake to improve focus. Question 14. Correct answer. B. Monitor for escalating mania and communicate changes to the healthcare team. Rationale. The nurse should closely monitor the patient for signs of escalating mania, such as increased irritability and decreased need for sleep. It's important to communicate any changes to the healthcare team to adjust treatment as needed. High-intensity exercise, A, may exacerbate symptoms of mania. Making significant decisions, C, during a hypomanic phase, can lead to poor judgment. Increasing caffeine intake, D, can worsen symptoms of mania and disrupt sleep patterns. Question 15. Scenario. A nurse is working with a patient who has been diagnosed with major depressive disorder and is currently experiencing a severe depressive episode. Question, which nursing intervention is most critical for this patient? A. Encouraging the patient to participate in competitive sports. B. Regular monitoring for signs of suicidal ideation or behaviors. C. Immediately initiating group therapy sessions for social interaction. D. Advising the patient to make life-altering decisions to improve mood. Correct answer. B. Regular monitoring for signs of suicidal ideation or behaviors. Rationale. For a patient experiencing a severe depressive episode, it is crucial to regularly monitor for any signs of suicidal ideation or behaviors. This is a key aspect of ensuring patient safety. Encouraging participation in competitive sports, A, may be overwhelming and inappropriate given the patient's current state. While group therapy, C, can be beneficial, it should be initiated cautiously and tailored to the patient's current ability to engage. 
Advising the patient to make life-altering decisions, d, during a severe depressive episode is inappropriate due to impaired decision-making capacity. Question 16. Scenario, a nurse is caring for a patient with a history of recurrent major depressive episodes. The patient is currently in remission but expresses concern about the possibility of relapse. Question, what is the most appropriate nursing intervention to help prevent relapse in this patient? A. Advise the patient to avoid stressful situations at all costs. B. Encourage the patient to discontinue antidepressants to test their ability to cope without medication. C. Educate the patient about early signs of depression and stress management techniques. D. Suggest that the patient should isolate themselves from social activities to avoid stress. Correct answer, C. Educate the patient about early signs of depression and stress management techniques. Rationale, education on recognizing early signs of depression and effective stress management techniques is crucial in preventing relapse. This empowers the patient to seek help early and apply coping strategies to mitigate stress, a common trigger for depressive episodes. Avoiding all stress, A, is unrealistic and may not be practical. Discontinuing antidepressants, B, without medical advice can increase the risk of relapse. Suggesting social isolation, D, can lead to loneliness and depression, which are risk factors for relapse. Question 17. Scenario, a nurse is caring for a patient diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, following a traumatic event. The patient has difficulty sleeping and experiences frequent nightmares. Question, which nursing intervention is most appropriate for this patient? A. Encourage the patient to watch television late at night to distract from the trauma. B. Implement relaxation techniques and create a conducive sleep environment. C. Advise vigorous exercise right before bedtime to ensure fatigue. D. Recommend the use of alcohol to facilitate sleep. Correct answer. B. Implement relaxation techniques and create a conducive sleep environment. Rationale. For patients with PTSD experiencing sleep disturbances, implementing relaxation techniques and creating a conducive sleep environment can be beneficial. This includes practices like deep breathing, guided imagery, and ensuring a quiet, dark, and comfortable bedroom. Watching television late at night, A, can be overstimulating and disrupt sleep patterns. Vigorous exercise before bedtime, C, can be counterproductive as it may increase alertness. The use of alcohol, D, as a sleep aid is inappropriate, as it can lead to dependence and worsen sleep quality in the long term. Question 18. Scenario, a nurse is working with a patient diagnosed with obsessive-compulsive disorder, OCD, characterized by excessive handwashing due to fear of contamination. Question, what should be the focus of the nurse's psychoeducation for this patient? A. Emphasize the need for cleanliness to reduce the risk of contamination. B. Teach the patient about the irrational nature of their fears. C. Educate about OCD and coping strategies to manage compulsive behaviors. D. Encourage the patient to avoid situations that trigger the need to wash hands. Correct answer. C. Educate about OCD and coping strategies to manage compulsive behaviors. Rationale. Psychoeducation for a patient with OCD should focus on providing information about the disorder and teaching coping strategies to manage compulsive behaviors. This includes techniques like cognitive behavioral therapy, exposure and response prevention, and stress management. Emphasizing cleanliness, A, might reinforce compulsive behaviors. Simply telling the patient that their fears are irrational, B, can be invalidating and unhelpful. Encouraging avoidance of triggers, D, is not practical and may reinforce the anxiety and compulsive behavior. Question 19. Scenario. A nurse is working with a patient who has been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, GAD. The patient reports constant, excessive, and uncontrollable worry about everyday matters. Question, what is an appropriate nursing intervention for this patient? A. Encourage the patient to avoid situations that trigger anxiety. B. Teach the patient cognitive behavioral techniques to manage anxiety. 
C. Suggest the patient keep their worries to themselves, to avoid burdening others. D. Advise the patient to use alcohol moderately for relaxation. Correct answer. B. Teach the patient cognitive behavioral techniques to manage anxiety. Rationale. Cognitive behavioral techniques, including thought challenging and relaxation exercises, are effective in managing GAD. These techniques help the patient to identify, challenge, and change unhelpful thoughts and behaviors. Avoiding anxiety-provoking situations, A, can reinforce the anxiety. Encouraging the patient to keep worries to themselves, C, can lead to increased stress and isolation. Recommending alcohol, D, for relaxation is inappropriate and can lead to dependency issues. Question 20. Scenario. A nurse is caring for a patient who has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. The patient is currently in a depressive phase and shows signs of low self-esteem and hopelessness. Question, which intervention should the nurse prioritize to address these symptoms? A. Encourage the patient to make significant life changes to improve their situation. B. Engage the patient in activities that foster a sense of achievement and purpose. C. Recommend the patient isolate themselves from others to focus on self-improvement. D. Advise the patient to stop taking medication as it may be causing low mood. Correct answer. B. Engage the patient in activities that foster a sense of achievement and purpose. Rationale. Engaging the patient in activities that foster a sense of achievement can help improve self-esteem and counteract feelings of hopelessness. This approach can provide the patient with a sense of purpose and accomplishment. Advising significant life changes, A, can be overwhelming and may not be appropriate during a depressive phase. Recommending isolation, C, can exacerbate feelings of loneliness and depression. Advising the patient to stop medication, D, without consulting a healthcare provider is dangerous and can lead to worsening symptoms. Question 21. Scenario, a nurse is providing care for a patient diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder. The patient often manipulates others and shows a lack of remorse for their actions. Question, what is the most effective communication strategy for the nurse to use with this patient? A. Confront the patient about their manipulative behavior in front of others. B. Maintain clear, consistent boundaries and expectations. C. Engage in power struggles to assert dominance. D. Be overly sympathetic to gain the patient's trust. Correct answer. B. Maintain clear, consistent boundaries and expectations. Rationale. When caring for a patient with antisocial personality disorder, it is important to maintain clear and consistent boundaries and expectations. This approach helps to establish a therapeutic relationship based on respect and safety. Confronting the patient about their behavior in front of others, A, can lead to hostility and is not conducive to a therapeutic relationship. Engaging in power struggles, C, is counterproductive and can escalate conflict. Being overly sympathetic, D, can be perceived as weakness and may be manipulated by the patient. Question 22. Scenario, a nurse is caring for a patient who has been diagnosed with somatic symptom disorder. The patient frequently visits the hospital with various physical complaints that have no identifiable medical cause. Question, what is the most appropriate nursing approach for this patient? A. Dismiss the patient's complaints as they are not medically founded. B. Validate the patient's feelings and provide consistent, supportive care. C. Encourage the patient to ignore their symptoms and focus on other activities. D. Recommend the patient seek care only when new symptoms arise. Correct answer. B. Validate the patient's feelings and provide consistent, supportive care. Rationale. For patients with somatic symptom disorder, it is important to validate their feelings and provide consistent and supportive care. This approach acknowledges the patient's experience of their symptoms, even if a medical cause is not identified. Dismissing the patient's complaints, A can lead to feelings of being misunderstood and neglected. Encouraging the patient to ignore their symptoms, C, is not therapeutic and does not address the underlying psychological distress.
Advising the patient to seek care only for new symptoms, D, may result in neglect of important health monitoring and continuity of care. Question 23. Scenario. A nurse is working with a patient experiencing acute stress disorder following a traumatic event. The patient has intrusive thoughts, is hypervigilant, and is having difficulty sleeping. Question, which intervention should the nurse prioritize for this patient? A. Immediate processing of the traumatic event in detail. B. Providing a safe and structured environment to promote a sense of security. C. Encouraging the avoidance of discussions or thoughts about the traumatic event. D. Recommending the patient keep busy to distract from the trauma. Correct answer. B. Providing a safe and structured environment to promote a sense of security. Rationale. For a patient with acute stress disorder, providing a safe and structured environment is crucial. This approach helps to promote a sense of security and stability, which can be therapeutic for someone experiencing hypervigilance and sleep disturbances. Immediate detailed processing of the trauma, A, may be overwhelming and should be approached carefully. Encouraging avoidance of the traumatic event, C, can delay healing and exacerbate symptoms. Keeping the patient busy as a distraction, D, does not address the underlying trauma and may prevent effective coping and processing. Question 24. Scenario, a nurse is caring for a patient diagnosed with dissociative identity disorder, DID. The patient displays multiple distinct identities or personalities. Question, what is the primary nursing goal in caring for this patient? A. Encourage the patient to suppress alternate identities as they emerge. B. Focus on integrating the patient's multiple identities into one. C. Provide support and therapy to help the patient cope with trauma history. D. Ignore the presence of alternate identities and only address the primary identity. Correct answer. C. Provide support and therapy to help the patient cope with trauma history. Rationale. The primary nursing goal in caring for a patient with DID is to provide support and appropriate therapy to help the patient cope with their trauma history, as DID is often a response to severe trauma. This approach involves creating a safe environment and facilitating therapeutic interventions. Encouraging suppression of alternate identities, A, can be harmful and counterproductive. While integration, B, may be a long-term goal, it should not be the primary focus without considering the patient's readiness and therapeutic process. Ignoring alternate identities, D, dismisses a significant aspect of the patient's experience and can impede therapeutic rapport and treatment. Question 25. Scenario, a nurse is working with a patient who has been diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. The patient often demonstrates grandiosity and a lack of empathy towards others. Question, what is the most effective communication strategy for the nurse to use with this patient? A. Constantly praise the patient to boost their self-esteem. B. Challenge the patient's beliefs about their superiority. C. Maintain professional boundaries and provide consistent, respectful care. D. Agree with the patient's perceptions to avoid confrontation. Correct answer. C. Maintain professional boundaries and provide consistent, respectful care. Rationale. When working with a patient with narcissistic personality disorder, maintaining professional boundaries and providing consistent, respectful care is crucial. This approach involves treating the patient with dignity and respect while not reinforcing unhelpful narcissistic patterns. Constantly praising the patient, A, may reinforce narcissistic behaviors. Directly challenging the patient's beliefs about their superiority, B, can lead to defensiveness and hinder the therapeutic relationship. Agreeing with the patient's distorted perceptions, D, is not therapeutic and does not promote healthy self-awareness or empathy. Visit nursestudy.net for more nursing practice exams, care plans, and study guides.